that in a minute. Um, and then we'll move to, um, I know we specifically decided to meet this month to talk about bike and roll to school day, sharing of ideas and updates. And then we do have an implementation application to review for uh, grants for the school sector. And then we'll move to group updates. And Katie, can you provide the update when we get to the Move Together KC campaign? Sure right. can. And then we'll talk about our next event. Um, I can I can start. My name is Christine Scherenberg, and I support the school sector um, as uh, the co-lead. Looking for a co I'm looking to, uh, for a co-lead on that. Um, and I currently work in Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, supporting the physical education team and soon-to-be health team. Um, some changes are out our way. And we can popcorn around. Um, Brian, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I'm Brian Mays. Uh, I am the... Um, coordinator of school-based health initiatives uh, here at uh, Children's Mercy. And uh, I just kind of like to uh, certainly join your meetings to kind of see what's going on in the community and uh, if possible, uh, see where we can join. Uh, I'm not sure who uh, is on the list. You want me to just go to somebody else or um, I can go ahead and call on somebody. I'm going to have um, Jill. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jill Rayford. I'm with Johnson County Department of Health and Environment, and I work on um, a chronic disease grant here, but um, one of my sectors of that is Safe Routes to School. Um, so I'll turn it back to you, Katie. Sounds good. Um, I'll just go ahead and choose myself and keep popcorning over to people. So I'm Katie Amy, and I'm with Kansas City Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative. I help to support a couple of our different initiatives, one being the Kansas City Physical Activity Plan, and so I help support our school sector. Um, I will go ahead and pass it over to Shelly. Hi, I'm Shelly Summer. I am also with Kansas City Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative based at Children's Mercy. Um, <clears throat> and I will turn it over to Chris. Hi, my name is Chris Grellup with the Olathe Public School District. I'm the manager of planning for the school mm -hmm. district. And um, I got introduced to this by some folks at Mike Watt Casey at one of their meetings. And so I'm popping in for the first time to see what's happening. And I guess back to Katie. Yeah. Well, welcome. Good to have you here. I'll pop corner over to our last uh, participant, Brooke. Hello, I'm Brooke. Um, I work with Score One for Health out of KCU, and I am the Champs Coordinator. So we kind of support uh, healthy lifestyle coaching with families that um, we identify through our health screenings. And we also do a program um, in some of our schools called Anatomy Academy. And I just like hearing all your guys' ideas because it gives me good ideas too. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for introducing yourselves. Um, as far as bike and roll to school day coming up on May 8th, um, I believe we shared, Katie shared in the last, I feel like it went out in the last newsletter, the resources that we do have, but I'm not sure if we have new ones to add to that. Um, I guess it went out. Is there a way to share the link for, for people to add if they're participating in an event? I did look yeah. at that. I can go ahead and drop it. So. Okay. It's the walk, bike, and roll to school webpage. Yeah. And then and I, I think if you have anything else, if, if you just want to send those to Patrick, um, he can add them over Does at Mark. Manage that Okay. Does he manage that website? He he has somebody in his office. I don't know specifically if he does, but um, just send them all over to him, and then he can add them. Have 
I forget what her name is over there that she she'll add it because um, I have one to send them to. Um, also, Bike Walk PC, um, if you're doing anything related to Bike Month or specifically Bike and Roll to School Day, if you have information you'd like to share, you can uh, send them an email and they'll promote it um, as well. Let me drop their email address here. And I'll do that. Can you add the one? So can you also add for Mark? I don't know if we need that. Um. Yeah, I only have Patrick's, but I'm sure he can pass it okay. along. So I'll drop his email as well. Okay. Um. I'm just. I'm, okay. I just took a quick peek at the walk bike and roll to school um, site. That for me has just been the most useful to show to all the PE teams that I am supporting. Um, and when I clicked in can on Kansas and I can see that I can see the schools that I support, the ones I have signed up. Um, do we have any other information for, I, mean, I don't know if I have any other information for, I feel like everything's on that website. Yeah. And the, the specific one from Mark is, um, walkbikeroll.org. Um, if you go to like Mark, um, and then slash bike month, and then you'll go to walkbikeroll.org. That's the one that Mark is putting out. That other specific, other one is more specific only for you to like register your school. But all these events that we'll be sending in across the KC Metro for bike to school day or bike month or any of that for the month of May will be on that Mark one, that Mark website. So do we need to put that in the link? Yeah, I can put that in there. Thanks, Joel. I was trying to find it. Yeah, I was just looking at my notes from when we talked to uh, Patrick last. I was hoping he would actually be on this call because I wanted to, at our last meeting, we discussed that uh, um, funding opportunity, the Destination Safe Programs. Um, and he had mentioned how if somebody wanted to apply for a project such as Safe Routes to School, that might be a good opportunity. And um, if we wanted to discuss that as a group, if there was anybody we knew that would be interested in applying for that, um, or ask questions if he was on. So I guess if I have a link for walk, bike, and stroll to school day, but it's all set up around uh, on Mark's website, but it just it seems very geared towards the October 4th from the fall. So if there's a wonder, spring link. I wonder if they haven't updated it yet or if it's not gone live yet because it's Maybe it won't go live until May, but that's where it will be held. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's, that's a good point. It's probably not live yet. I I just put the one that, the one that I was just on in the thing, but it, it's really all about October 4th, mm -hmm. but it does talk about biking and rolling, so. And then Katie, do you want to add the transportation that link to the chat? Um, destination safe program. 
in that through mark. Okay. So open to call for projects, like a safe route school program. The deadline's April 4th. I thought it was interesting because um, in the past, grant a little bit of grant funding goes a long way to finding um, a champion at a school for either a walking school bus and I've read recently about biking school bus and um, so that was let me see if that that's something I can share with the teachers I work with or reach out to bike walk. I guess it's a uh, safe route. Who's in, who is it? Who holds the safe route to school programming? Is that just by county? Like I would reach out to why not? About that. Are you talking about the safe routes to school website? Well, yeah, the safe routes to school and in general, they seem they've supported in the past with small grants for a walking school bus or, and so I guess that's something I would just reach out to the. By the county, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I would think. Does anyone have questions about resources for bike to school day on May 8th? No, but I have a question for you, Christine. I thought I remember you saying that Wyandotte County has a contract with Bike Walk KC for Safe Routes to School. Did I get that wrong? Because um, I was wondering where that's going because I thought Blake Hensley was no longer with Wyandotte County, correct? Do you know who has replaced him? Oh, that may explain why I have not heard from him. I, didn't, I did not. I, did I not didn't know that. that. I didn't know that. I didn't either. I recently had reached out because last spring he had shared amazing um, Wyandotte um, activities coming up um, for BICO. They called it BICO WICO. And I was just curious if that programming was going to be on the website and it was just like cricket. So I so should I have, got, um, Yeah, I had an email, uh, like an automatic email reply saying that he wasn't with Wyandotte County anymore. So I was curious if that was just a rumor or like what happened and if you knew any information on that. Okay. Nope, you actually have more information than me. Um, I do believe that Bike Walk KC was working with Wyandotte County um, just to provide, you know, partnership with the schools. And there was a small talk of safe routes to schools funding to the state to possibly get a fleet of bikes and that is all kind of on hold right now so i don't have any updates on that um i do know that the schools in wyandotte county they must have renewed some type of funding at the state to provide uh biking experiences for third through fifth graders i mean they're backed up and not all schools will receive it but um, and how many, I know that there's been a few schools over in Johnson County who's participated in some of the biking programs provided by Bike Walk KC. Um, I know some of the Olathe school districts, um, but Christine, remind me, which one's in Wyandotte County? Do you know? Oh, which school? If, or... and if you don't, that's okay. I just thought oh, I yeah. would. Oh, yeah, lot. Um... Well, um, I know that some resources from Bike Walk KC, um, they mentioned that they've got blinky lights that they'll be able to provide to some of the schools who participated in bike programming that are available wow. for bike to school day. So um, you would use that same email address I had posted in the chat earlier just to reach out and contact them about that, getting some. So just wanted to share that resource. I know about that one. That's fun because I can at least reach out to the ones um, who have registered for bike and roll day because if they've also done the blast programming, they might be able to get some of those. Yeah, um, and reach out to Nolan too. He probably would be a better contact than just using their info oh, email. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can move on. I know our teachers are super, they're all, I mean, everyone's kind of like, when can I get a week time with like walk KC? So um, moving on to implementation applications, um, the purpose of projects are to advance the strategies and tactics of each sector of the plan, of the KCPA plan. Um, applications should demonstrate connectedness across the different sectors of the KCPA plan. To address the issues across different levels of the ecological model. Um, the implementation project was one that I submitted and it's um, safety around water. So um, I can just describe it. Um, the purpose, um, it's safety around water second grade pilot program and it involves um, second graders at two schools in KCK. And the purpose of the project is to prevent childhood drowning, um, addressing some, some statistics from our community. Um, and the Providence YMCA plans to host these two um, schools and second graders um, for the Safety Around Water Swimming Lesson Program. Um, the details, it just is providing six sessions um, for second graders, so, and what plan, what Kansas City Physical Activity Plan strategies or tactics does this project support? I tried to highlight those, um, strategy one and tactic three, in that swimming and water safety fits with a CSAP model, a uh, comprehensive school physical activity plan is a national model that all districts are encouraged to look at, um, providing physical activity before school, during school, after school, um, family night, staff, just it's very comprehensive. Um, I also identified strategy two and tactic two in supporting collaborative efforts between the YMCA and the school district. Um, is due to the specialized nature of skills being acquired by students, having the YMCA uh, staff um, providing the knowledge of programming um, for the pilot. And strategy three, tactic four, um, because Mayor Garner um, has expressed an interest, uh, a goal, a long-term goal for all second graders in Wyandotte County to receive swim safety. And then I did add Parks and Rec Sector Strategy 13, um, Tactic 3. Um, just identifying the partnership between the YMCA, community-based YMCA and the school district to advocate for all second graders. Um, and then I just noted that this project is very small. It is just to replicate what could, we could do on a larger scale the biggest barrier is to identify renewable source of funding. And then the next section of the application is to ask what system levels this project addresses. So the first level, individual and interpersonal behavior, um, it definitely addresses individual behavior of students, both what they know and what they're able to do um, at the completion of their swim lessons. Um, at the organizi organizing and advocacy level, um, I noted that the project does aim to build a coalition across Wyandotte County, aligning efforts among multiple entities. Um, in this one, the, the Parks and Rec, the YMCA, school district, um, and the, um, the county office are all uh, working together, kind of creating something that hasn't existed before. And then at the policy level, um, it's, I do not have specific language about identifying policy. I did, however, find a link to another state, I believe it was New York, that did um, introduce a bill to provide swimming for every second grader um, in their area. So I thought that was interesting. Um, as far as other sectors to be involved, um, it was 
what I put above about parks and rec um, sector and school sector. And the next steps after completing this project, um, which is kind of what we're working on even now is just looking for large renewable grants. Um, I know our district has a grant writer and I've reached out to her and they reached out to Mayor Garner. Um, so we don't have those, we don't have that process identified. Um, and then the funding request is for $8,166, which we split between the two sectors. And there might be a little table at the bottom that just shows um, our contact with the YMCA, Saber Parsons, has provided this type of programming before, but it's usually after school. So um, we originally had looked at four schools. That's why those other schools are on there. But that's all I have. If there's any questions about um, the application or specific parts of it, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, and before we continue with this review process, just for those who are new, the KCP plan um, has funding available for each of our sector groups. So that's why there's two sectors involved in this one. And I will go ahead and drop the link in the chat to our KCP plan website that includes our plan. So if you're not familiar with our sector strategies, um, you can get a have a chance to review them while we review this application. And I see um, that's a good question. Shelly's asked, what's the benefit of providing the swim training during the school day versus after school or during the summer? And currently um, the YMCA partners with KidZone. And so those kids are the ones receiving swim lessons right now. Um, there's a system that they have in schedule so that kids own students are. And they also, um, I don't know about the summer because our ESSER funding um, went away or we used it all. And so the typical summer enrichment that we have provided families in the past, um, I, I don't think it's been announced what's happening this summer. So, um, the benefit of reaching students during the day is that it does reach every second grader. That's some what we're trying to demonstrate. And I know that there's a lot of tension around instructional minutes and um, to focus on all the parts that matter. They all matter, but just finding that academic time, uh, those are things that we have to consider that the minutes do shift when you take time for bucking and you have to allot time for um, drying off and getting back. So um, I guess I keep just going back to the data about um, the community and what their needs are and how we are seeing a long-term vision right now with our high school pools and getting our students WSI and lifeguard certified and this is a place where we can um, focus on the younger kids and those drowning statistics. Uh, another quick question, have families asked for this opportunity or do you have feedback about how families who've had kids who participated in swim training felt about it or if they recommend it to others? That's actually a, a feasible, um, that's a feasible, to be an action item that I could follow up with Sabra because they've only had, I mean, everything that I have listened to has been positive, um, but to ask, oops. I think that um, would be great feedback to include in an application. If you knew mm -hmm. that families who participated loved it, it would just provide additional justification for why. Yeah. This is a great pilot to try to expand. I I would like to add that based on what the the swim to learn learn to swim um, um, grant they've they've used grants in the past and I would like to add that information 
And I would also be able to ask the district if we can, I mean, I could survey the two schools that we're looking at to see that would also have been helpful to include. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be great. If you already know that, let's say 80% of the families love the idea, then that's additional justification. My other question is about, you mentioned at the very beginning that the purpose of this is around drowning prevention. Is that the only purpose or is it also to teach kids how to swim? Um, and I can get, I probably need to get the um, specifics from Sabra because I also wondered um, when the kids leave from those six sessions, um, they, my question is, do all second graders at that time, are they all able to swim or some maybe leave the program able to swim and others have the skills to learn how to float and to make it to safety um, in a situation where they might have otherwise drowned. So that's something that went through my head when I was reading um, the information that she has used to do this program. So. Well, I, I think I in the, in the, what Katie has up right now, it says the purpose of the project is to prevent childhood drowning. I think in order to demonstrate clear alignment um, with the physical activity plan, I think adding that piece. So in addition to preventing childhood drowning, it also promotes swimming as a physical activity. I think just adds additional clarification and alignment with the physical activity plan. For sure. Yeah, because that is the goal is right for right. our kids to be able to experience swimming as a physical activity option. Yes. Um, so introduce it to them, get them a chance to try it if they might not otherwise get that experience or opportunity. Thank you. Good feedback. The other part, so the only other additional feedback I'll share, Katie, do you mind scrolling down to the, the um, multi-level part of it? So obviously it increases individual and interpersonal behaviors. It's teaching kids skills. Fantastic, very clear. Um, I like the idea to aim to build a coalition, aligning, you know, encouraging more training around drowning prevention, introducing kids to swimming, all those sorts of things. Um, I even think what you shared about a promising policy is very interesting. I think for the purposes of this, you can include that as a point of information, but I don't think it's necessarily a requirement to have the policy piece in there if you have the other two pieces. And if, if as you move forward with this work, if you're not, if the policy piece isn't something that's really very viable or isn't garnering additional support or maybe outside of the scope of this pilot, I think that's fine to keep that in there as an idea, although not mm -hmm. necessarily a focus of this project. So I could take off the policy, the C, but maybe sure. leave the, just the, the extra information. At the bottom. Well, I, th I think you could put that in next steps, honestly. Okay, yeah. That, that does fit better because I wasn't originally, that wasn't, that, that link wasn't on my radar. Yeah, I think it could be, uh, hey, we found this policy and we'd like to, after we do this pilot, we'd like to consider exploring the opportunity of creating a school district policy or I don't know, I don't know what, whatever you think makes sense. Yeah. But I think that is certainly could be included there. Thanks for all the feedback. Hopeful. Um, other updates? Do we have any group updates?
Um, I can just say from uh, KCK, we are getting ready for Kansas Kids Fitness Day, uh, 1,600 third graders. We did have to split the event to different locations. And then our high school leaders, our high schoolers come and provide um, the, the leadership at those activities, just celebrating movement and fitness um, and fun. And that's in, uh, actually that's in May. In April, it's Are You Faster Than a Fifth Grader? Not so both events are very close together, but the fifth graders get to race the superintendent, um, 15 from each building. And then the remaining 1,200 students get to enjoy a mile walk on the same route. So just gearing up for that with um, the city and the support um, is fun. So this is from our area. Um, if there's no update, other updates, um, Katie, do you want to speak about Move Together? Let me just pull up our website. So um, for those who are new, one of our sector groups, um, our media and communications, has been working on a physical activity campaign for a while now, and we recently launched it earlier this year. So we launched the first portion, which was our social media. And um, our posts are kind of organized with like Movement Monday to encourage um, ideas for staying active during the workday or during school day. And then we have partner spotlights and um, we celebrate national holidays and just provide information related to those while also still promoting that concept of movement for everybody. So recently um, we released our uh, campaign tools. So they're divided by sector and organization. So our sector groups can utilize them. Um, sector specifically, I hope I'm making sense there. So it comes with uh, <laughs> Um, our brand assets include campaign talking points, a style guide, there's B-roll footage, there's stock images, there's uh, Canva templates. Um, so if you wanted to contribute by posting to your own social media account and our effort to get everybody up and active, um, because we want to promote this concept that movement is for everybody in the Kansas City region, and we want everyone to come together to promote that idea. Um, so they are available now on our Kansas City Fiscal Activity Plan website, or you can go to movetogetherkc.org, um, which will bring you back to this page. And again, there's a plethora of tools. Um, I do ask if you do share this um, on your social media that you tag us uh, using at symbol um, because we do promote the hashtag move together, Casey, it doesn't let us know that you posted. And if you post and tag us, we're able to share what you've posted. So if you have an event coming up, like what Casey has done this a few times, and you want to promote that concept again of movement, uh, tag us and we'll share your story. Um, cause we want everybody to have knowledge of these opportunities around the area. So Any questions, Shelly? No questions. I just want to encourage anyone who's participating in the um, bike month or the bike to school day activities. We would love pictures from that. We would love to ha see that you um, include the Move Together KC hashtag in those promotions that you might do on social media. Um, we're also encouraging individuals, so for you all to do this on your own as individuals, even outside of your organizations, we'd like you to follow our social media, both on Instagram and Facebook, and tell us you how you move. So in addition to the Move Together KC hashtag, we are encouraging people to share how they move through the hashtag move to blank. So move to have fun, the garden moves to grow, move to get to school.
And I like that the option, I think people can either write or type in there or they can even uh, record themselves. That Is there a way that they can record themselves? Is that how I understand the Yes, I, I wasn't sure if my um, my microphone was on. Yes, I will be posting that link to share your own story um, here in a second in the chat. But regarding the video option, which we would love like an actual video story of somebody, um, it's a little confusing. They've changed our organization we work with to create this campaign overflow did recently change the settings to so be less confusing so now the only option for recording is the actual video button above um, and then once you're done responding to one of the questions it automatically goes to the next so it should be a little easier to navigate um, now and moving forward While I search for that link, because I don't think I actually have it in our agenda today. Um, Shelly, do you want to give your announcement? No? Okay. I would like to, are we going to promote the sector, the, the summit? Yes, we can. So, um, for those who are new as well, we've, um, Kenzie Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative has been working with Aspen Institute to do a mini state of play. Um, and what this is, is they've gone around the Kansas City metro area and asked questions uh, regarding like youth programs in the, um, access to youth programs, what motivates youth to participate in sports and just a variety of questions. And what we're what's coming up for us is that we have a summit. It's free. Um, you we just ask that you register. It'll be over at Johnson County Heritage Center. Did I say that right, Shelley? Johnson County Arts and Heritage. Heritage. We should have okay. Jill. Is that right, Jill? Do you know? It's, yeah, Johnson County Johnson County Arts and Heritage. Yep. Okay. Um and so uh, what they'll be sharing is um, the results of the surveying, as well as we'll have keynote speakers. So um, I know Kathy Nelson is one. Um, I'm not quite familiar with her keynotes as I don't help support our sports sector. Shelly, do you Frank know White. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who may know, uh, Frank White Jr., he was a former Royals baseball player and city council person in Kansas City, Missouri. We're also going to have, um, those are our two sort of lead off speakers. And we're going to have a few other participants who can speak to their experiences with sports. So Wesley Hamilton, who may be familiar to some of you um, through his organization called Disabled, I think it's Disabled, but not really. He's mm -hmm. done an outstanding job of video recording his attempts to get into park, park and rec settings in Kansas City, Missouri. Wesley is um, in a wheelchair. I don't know why, um, but he really shows how considering people of all abilities is really important in design. So he's going to speak a little bit to that. You've already heard Katie mention we're going to, they're going to speak to the results from our sports survey. We will have representatives from the major professional sports teams in the area. They're very interested in moving this work forwards. So we're really pleased that all of this is coming together. And again, it will be Monday, April 8th. It will take place right after the solar eclipse. So we really feel like that's a sign and that all things are coming into alignment to really propel this work forward. It looks like the registration is in the chat now.
Any other announcements anyone like would like to make today? I don't, but um, I'm a little slow. Unfortunately, I'm posting some of our links we discussed. So I just posted the um, link to share your story about why you move, as well as our uh, Move Together KC Facebook and Instagram handles. So if you're not already, give them a follow. Um, would love to also support you and follow you back. Thanks for all that, Katie. I think that's all we have other than our meeting, our next meeting um, at this Thursday, April 11th. And yeah. Uh, so typically, as you probably all know, today is a Tuesday. Um, just in consideration of spring break, it's why we moved the meeting date. Um, we do typically have our meetings the second Thursday of the month. It changed. It used to be the fourth, I believe. So it's the second Thursday of the month now, and it's at one o'clock. So I do have that link to register. Um, and I just posted in the chat. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Um... Have a fantastic afternoon. Christine, do you have a second? I do.